Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Executive Editor of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining the current installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Real World Data Governance with Bob Siner. Today, Bob will discuss using Agile to justify data governance. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. If you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Just click the chat icon in the upper right corner for that feature. For questions, we'll be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag RWDG, Real World Data Governance. As always, we will send a follow-up within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speaker for today, Bob Siner. Bob is the president and principal of KIK Consulting and Educational Services and the publisher of the data administration newsletter, TDAN.com. Bob has been a recipient of the DEMA Professional Award for significant and demonstrable contributions to the data management industry. Bob specializes in non-invasive data governance, data stewardship, and metadata management solutions. And with that, I will give the floor to Bob to get today's webinar started, the last webinar of the year for Dataverse. I was just, oh. just going to say that, right? Um, it's, an <laughs> honor. it's an honor and a privilege to be the last webinar. There are so many webinars that Dataversity produces, and I'm glad to be a part of it. And also, in a minute, I'm going to share with you what the first couple upcoming webinars of the Real World Data Governance series are in 2017. So I look yeah, forward to Yeah, it's our 89th webinar of the year. This is the 89th webinar. And so this webinar series has been going on a while, and I, I'm really glad that we've got so much participation, and it, it's really great to see so many people that come time and time again. And I also welcome all of you new folks as well. So again, as I always do, I want to thank you for your, um, your valuable time um, in attending the webinar, and hopefully it will be valuable to you. So as Shannon mentioned, the name of this webinar is Using Agile to Justify Data Governance. And over the years, we've done several webinars on Agile and data governance. I thought that this was a good angle to take for this webinar, talking about how we can use Agile to justify data governance and how we can bring the two together and show the relationships and make sure that we're addressing the, the audiences that need to know that not only is Agile important, but data governance is important as well. So as I mentioned, I wanted to outline for you what the next three webinars are for January, February, and March. In January, we'll be talking about three specific and unique approaches to data stewardship. In February, uh, it'll be the opportunity to talk about my new non-invasive data governance framework. And then in March, we're going to talk about applying data governance to agile efforts. So it's really kind of a part two to what we're talking about today. So there's some specific items that we're going to walk through today that are in the agenda. I'll go through that in a minute, but just to let you know that the Real World Data Governance Series it, it takes place on the third Thursday of the month at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and that is where we all are today. So again, welcome today to the webinar. Before I get started, oftentimes I just kind of run through a couple things that I'm involved in, several of them involved with Dataversity. First is, as Shannon had mentioned, I talk a lot about non-invasive data governance. And just to let you know that there is a book called Non-Invasive Data Governance that's available. Also, if you're looking for more information on non-invasive data governance, you can go to kikconsulting.com. I mentioned that I work with uh, and partner with Dataversity quite a bit, so there's a couple different events that I wanted to bring to your attention if you're not familiar with them. But the next one that's coming up is in January, and it's the second um, Enterprise Data Governance Online event. And again, I have the honor and the privilege of kicking off that, that um, online conference, so please go to Dataversity and register, and I hope to have you there. I'll be talking about selecting the right approach to data governance in that, in that conference. And then there's Enterprise Data World that you're probably all familiar with, but if you're not, please go out to the Dataversity site and learn all about Enterprise Data World. I'll be speaking at that conference, and I'll be talking about comparing approaches to data governance. So there's a bunch of different approaches. There's non-invasive, there's traditional, there's command and control. If you're interested in learning the differences between those, please stop by um, 
at either of those events to learn more. A um, couple other real, uh, real quick things. One is the Data Administration Newsletter, the online publication that is produced by Dataversity and that I'm the publisher of. It, uh, the content is now being released twice a month. And if you're not familiar with TDAM.com, please go out there. There's lots of great articles on data governance, data modeling, anything pertaining, pertaining to data administration and data management. And last but not least, I wanted to introduce to you the, the new online training uh, series that we have through Dataversity called Non-Invasive Data Governance. So if you're looking for online training, please go to the Dataversity Training Center and learn more about non-invasive data governance and all the other great courses that are, are focusing on on data management and data practices. So let's start talking about what we're going to talk about today. So the abstract that we used to, um, to present what we were going to talk about today is as such. We, we all know that the Agile development methodology is here to stay. Many organizations are embracing Agile to different levels and to different degrees, but Agile is here to stay. And we also know that data governance is not going to go away anytime soon. The need to manage data as an asset of the organization is going to be important at the same time that we're being expected to deliver major projects for our organization in an agile and iterative way and be very quick and successful in the implementation of our projects. So we know that agile is here. We know that data governance is here. We've got to look for ways to bring agile and data governance together. We want to look at the two disciplines, and they share some common ground, and I'm going to talk about that in the webinar today, share with you a bunch of the major principles of agile de development and, and delivery of systems, but also share with you the aspects of it where I believe that we as data governance practitioners can really have some impact on these agile initiatives. So the disciplines really need to find ways to work together. And so what we're going to talk about today is using Agile to justify data governance within the projects. So if you've seen the abstract, what I did do is I took the liberty of just kind of rearranging a couple of the items, but I kept the items the same, but they're just in a little bit different order. I'm going to talk about the audiences for both Agile and data governance. We'll talk about the governance aspects of Agile and why data governance practitioners should embrace Agile while at the same time looking at what can we provide to those agile practitioners to, to help them to understand why data governance is important and where it fits in to their project schedules. So we'll talk about agile considerations for data governance, and then we'll talk about how to use agile to justify data governance. So that's our agenda for today. Um, for those of you that are new to this webinar series, I, I oftentimes start out, not all the time, but oftentimes start out with definitions that I use for key terms. And so I want to define data governance for you. I want to define data stewardship for you. There's a lot of different definitions of data governance out there. Um, they're, uh, depending on who you ask, they go anywhere from the orchestration of people and process and data, the harmonization of people and process and data. I like to have a definition of data governance that has more teeth to it. So I say that data governance is the execution and enforcement of authority over the management of data. We want to apply governance in a non-invasive way, and I'll talk a little bit about more about that in a minute. But the goal at the end of the day is to be able to execute and enforce authority over data, whether it's the management of the data aspects of large projects, whether it's data protection, the, the improvement of data understanding or data quality. At the end of the day, the idea is that we want to be able to execute and enforce authority over the management of data. And the, my definition that I use for data stewardship is more in line with the whole idea of being non-invasive in the approach, which is that you've already got people in the organization that have a relationship to data. That relationship may be through defining data, producing data, using data. But one of the things that we need to do is we need to formalize the levels of accountability that are associated with those relationships to the, data, to the data. So again, the definition that I use for data stewardship is that it's the formalization of accountability over the management of data and data-related resources rather than handing it to people as something that's brand new to them. Typically, users of data need to understand the rules associated with using the data. People who are defining data need to know the rules associated with defining the data. So let's try to stay as non-invasive as we can in our approach to implementing governance. 
So the last definition I wanted to share with you is that of non-invasive data governance, which basically plays to everything that I just talked about. The practice of applying that formal accountability and behavior through non-invasive roles and responsibilities, and we've done webinars on those roles and responsibilities. We're going to apply governance to processes rather than redefining or defining everything in our organization as a data governance process. And we're going to assure that the definition, production, and usage of data does all the things that we want out of our data governance program, which would be to assure regulatory compliance, security, privacy, protection, and quality. So really, non-invasive describes the approach of how we're going to apply governance in the organization to be in a non-threatening way. Uh, and again, a lot of organizations look at the non-invasive approach and say, this is something that we need to embrace because there are already people in the organization that have responsibility for data. We want to be transparent, supportive, and collaborative wherever we can when we're implementing governance across the organization. A couple other quick definitions, and these aren't really definitions, but it's kind of descriptions of the Agile Manifesto. Um, and, and as it's defined, it's a development methodology that is, is basically set up to lead to good data design. And there's five primary things that I found um, in, in the work that I've done with organizations that are taking the Agile approach. Five primary items that they focus on are getting the right people involved in the interaction between the people, being speedy with the delivery and being effective at the same time, so being iterative in the approach, you know, delivering working software products as they're at every step of the way, making sure that we do requirements and that we do collaboration. And one of the things that you'll find when I speak about this a little bit later in the webinar is that we've got to talk about what level of requirements we as data practitioners, data governance practitioners, require of the agile folks to make sure that um, that the, the data that results from the implementation of the Agile projects is successful and that it covers all the needs of the business, folk, business folks within our organization. The last one being responsive and getting the right people evol uh, involved at the right time. Again, evolving the solution to what it needs to be. And this graphic is one that I found repeated a bunch of different places. It talks about the Agile approach where we develop functionality, we integrate and we test it, we develop some more functionality, we integrate and, text it and, and test it. We go through those iterations numerous times before we release a piece of software to people, get the feedback from them, and then continue to do these iterative development and testing and implementing steps. So the Agile process basically goes iteration by iteration, and it moves quickly in the development of the projects that we are focusing the, the Agile approach on. The opposite, or should I say the other side of the coin when we're looking at the Agile development methodology is the waterfall approach. And many of us traditional data people over the years are very used to the waterfall approach, which is a very linear and sequential approach to developing software, but it's very business requirement laden. Um, we need to make certain that we're involving the right people, like Agile wants to involve the right people. We want to make sure that we design the business requirements, that we, we define the process, we, we lay out exactly what we're doing, and we have a very structured manner to how we're delivering projects. Oftentimes, the folks that are, that are, are the, the folks that embrace the agile approach believe that the waterfall approach, this traditional approach, is something that's of the past, and that we're moving to a world where we need to be more agile. We need to be able to adopt and adapt to those things that are going on around us. So the waterfall approach is, in some organizations, falling by the wayside as organizations focus their agile efforts on their major initiatives, things like ERP transformations, redevelopment of data warehouses, uh, implementations of large data integrated um, projects across the organization. Those are the efforts that organizations are attempting to use agile on. Uh, in order to deliver them quickly and timely and get them to be the best that they can possibly be. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the audiences of both ad data governance. And the, the fact is that our senior leadership in a lot of our organizations are telling us that, that we, we need to govern our data. 
And, and they're also saying that we need to deliver projects quickly and we need to deliver them a quick, a, a, a effectively and in a quality manner. So what does senior leadership want from data governance? They want to make sure that the data is understood and that we have good governed data definition. They want to make sure that the data that results from these projects are, is good and that we have governed production of data across the organization. And they also want to make sure that the data is protected and that, that we are using the data the way the data is intended to be used, but we also understand or that we have people in our organization that understand the rules associated with handling data that has to be protected certain ways. So senior leadership typically wants these things. They want the data to be understood, they want it to be of high quality, and they want it to be protected at the same time. That's typically what senior leadership is looking for from data governance initiatives. So what does senior leadership want from agile, from agile development methods as well? And if you'll notice the guy in the middle of the screen, if you're as old as I am and you remember Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers had a guy named Mr. McFeely who was the speedy delivery guy. He was the guy that was always delivering packages, delivering them very speedy. You know, just as a quick side note, you know, a lot of people talk about growing up in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. Well, I literally, literally grew up in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. In fact, I delivered his newspaper at a time. I didn't run to his door and say speedy delivery. But the fact is senior leadership wants their big projects to be speedy. They want to have incremental delivery. They want to have high quality delivery. So they're looking for speed and agility at the same time as the data practitioners are looking to have high quality, well understood and well protected data across the organization. So senior leadership is basically an audience for both data governance and for taking the agile approach to implementing projects. And we need to recognize that and we need to help to educate people at the senior leadership level as to how these two different disciplines that seemingly on the surface have some different goals, um, instead of being fast to be accurate, you know, those types of things that we understand how we can get these two things to work together. So what does senior leadership think about data governance? Well, let's talk about a couple of the reasons why senior, senior leadership in organization are taking the approach that they want to govern their data. So typically they're saying that we want to manage data as an asset of the organization, that we want to protect the data, that we want to use the data to drive analytics and decision-making capabilities so that we make sure that we're delivering just-in-time data to the appropriate people at the appropriate time for, for the use that they, they need for the data. We want to make sure that the auditors, you know, the auditors are going to senior leadership and saying that we need to have auditable and demonstrable um, um, results of how we are improving the quality, improving the protected uh, aspect of the, date, of the data. And they, they see that other organizations are governing their data and they're saying if we're going to use data as an asset of our organization, we need to make sure that we have the, the formal execution and enforcement of authority over the management of the data. If you remember that, that's the definition that I use for data governance. And since other organizations are governing their data and the organizations that are just now starting to govern their data are looking at, at their competition and saying, you know, if they're going to get a competitive advantage out of their data, we need to do the same thing with our data. So therefore, we need to put formal governance in place in our organization. So what does senior leadership think about data governance? Well, there's several reasons why senior leadership also um, isn't, are not finding it important to implement governance. First of all, they don't understand different approaches that are available to implementing governance. They may think that data governance has to be about command and control, that we need to assign people into new roles. And in one of the future webinars that I spoke about um, and the presentations at the events that I spoke about, you know, one of the things that we want to do is make sure that we as data practitioners understand the different approaches that are available to governance and that we're able to communicate those to senior leadership so they're not 
that they, any, any fear or concern that they have of data governance being threatening to the organization, that they understand that there are alternative approaches that will be successful that don't have to be all about command and control. So they have the perception that data governance is very complex, and it's often based on the size of the organization, which is true. It can be complex. But again, depending on the approach that we take, we can limit that complexity and we can simplify the way we're putting governance programs in place. A lot of senior leadership thinks that governance moves slowly, that it's going to be expensive, it's going to require a lot of resources. We, they definitely understand that it's going to be a change in the culture of how we manage data as an asset of the organization. So we have a lot of education that we need to provide to our senior leadership to help them to understand why data governance is important and kind of steer them away from thinking what their present thinking is that, is that data governance is going to be difficult. There are alternative approaches that organizations can use to implement governance in a very effective way without being all about command and control. So what does senior leadership think about agile? So what are some of the reasons why senior leadership want to be agile in their approaches to large, um, large initiatives where data integration across the organization is going to be critical? And so the reasons that they're implementing agile is that the large projects as they know it are taking too long and oftentimes they cost way too much. The large projects need to be managed and to deliver quickly and accurately. They're implementing agile, uh, the agile approach because the projects must be delivered early and continuously rather than late and over budget. The project communications must be face to face. We are looking to deliver high quality and timely data to the organization. And we want to do that in such a way that it's going to be quick and effective, but we, at the same time, we want to make certain that the data that comes from the implementation of these agile projects is high quality and it's going to bring the value that we expect from the investments that we're, uh, we have in those projects. So what's some of the reasons why senior leadership are not implementing Agile? Well, the fact is they are. They are implementing Agile. In fact, they're, they're finding the only projects that the Agile approach is being focused on is these major initiatives that are time consuming and resource intensive. So the fact is that they are attempting to deliver projects using Agile. They're sold on the virtues of, of being agile and all the things that come with the quick and effective delivery of systems and the data that goes with it, but they're not necessarily as sold on the virtues of data governance. And so really agile is only being used for these major initiatives and those are the ones that are most critical to the organization that we need to be concerned about making certain that we deliver high quality data alongside those initiatives. So what can we do? What does senior leadership know about relating data governance and agile, the agile approach to, to application delivery? Um, my experience is that senior leadership don't typically have that conversation with folks to say, how can we bring data governance and agile together? And we as the data practitioners need to make certain that we educate them on how we can be agile and also deliver high quality data as a result of the agile efforts. So how much effort's been made to relate the two and what effort has been made to get the programs and the different projects aligned and how well are data governance programs acting agile? How, how are they at being agile in their approach? Well, there's very little concentration that's being given to bringing those two together. And um, we need to look for those things that we can leverage that are in the goals and the opportunities presented by both data governance and the agile approach. So we know that agile is a development methodology and the idea is that um, we know who does what, when, and how when it comes to the development effort. It's very structured, it's very disciplined, and it's very timely when the fact is with data governance, and I'm trying to, there we go. Governance, we know that governance is the execution and enforcement of authority, and they want the same things. They want to detail who does what, when, and how when it comes to governing the definition, the production, and the usage of the data. And oftentimes the governance initiatives are very structured, very disciplined, very timely. And if I go back and forth between the previous slide and this one, you'll see that 
basically the bullet points are the same. They want to know who does what, when and how, when it comes to um, the, the things that we're trying to deliver through these disciplines. They're very structured, very disciplined, and very timely. And one of the things that we can do as data governance practitioners is understand what level of requirements we need in order to be successful with the data without interfering with the timelines that are associated with our agile efforts. You know, one of the things from my experience that I've seen is if you go to an agile effort and say, no, no, we've got to stop here, we've got to do some, some gut checks, we've got to see, um, do we have all of our ducks in a row, do we have all of our guidelines? Well, the agile teams are, are working much quicker than that. So if we, again, as practitioners can limit the information that we need from them or we can find ways to be able to get that information from them more quickly and more effectively, that's one of the things that we can do as practitioners to bring data governance in our agile efforts together. If you've attended my webinars in the past, you know I talk often about something that I call a data governance bill of rights. And it's not a bill of rights like a traditional bill of rights where it's, you know, we the people, you know, that we have certain rights. It's really, it's getting the right people involved at the right time in the right process using the right data to do the right things to, do, to get the right results at least most of the time. Well, I'll be darned if that's not exactly what the Agile is trying to do, but they're trying to do it in a very quick and effective manner. So if we, again, can look at the approach that the Agile development teams are taking and we can look at the approach that we're taking to implement governance and the goal of both being is being to get the right people involved at the right time and the right process and so on and so forth, then we want to look at things associated with Agile where we can use those things to justify the need for data governance in our organization. So if governance is what we say it is, it's the execution and enforcement of authority, well, and we take a look at, we remember what that diagram was that I shared earlier about the agile iterative approach. You know, it talked about the different steps within an agile approach being the development of the functionality, the integrate and the test, the demo release, the client feedback, all of those things. Well, basically, in order to do those things effectively, we want to make certain that we involve the right people at the right time and the right effort and all those things that I mentioned in the Bill of Rights. So basically, governance theoretically should be already built into a lot of the steps of the iterative agile effort. And if we can highlight what those things are and get people to understand that they're really not coming at things from the opposite ends of the spectrum, then um, we can use that knowledge to help to apply governance where it's needed within the Agile efforts without interfering with the Agile efforts. So again, maybe what we want to do is we want to take the, the Bill of Rights that I've associated with data governance and implement those in terms of development. So getting the right development people involved at the right development time and the right development process, all of those types of things, but focus on it from a developmental perspective and make sure that we at least are involving the appropriate people in the development of the requirements that we need in order to be successful. So the focus of Agile, as I mentioned earlier, is people and interaction, speed and effectiveness, delivering working products and pieces of software, you know, evolving the requirements over time and, and getting the right level of collaboration across the organization. You know, and the idea, again, is to evolve the solution and be responsive to what our business community is asking for. Well, the fact is that data govern governance practitioners want the same thing. They want to involve the appropriate people at the appropriate time to get the appropriate level of requirements in our projects. A couple other things that we need. We, we know that the data governance practitioners want speed and effectiveness. We're, our idea is not to slow down the process but just to assure that the data associated with the process is the way that it needs to be so that when we deliver our Agile projects that there's not a lapse in the quality and the usefulness of the data that's associated with that project. 
The data governance practitioners want things to be working products. They want people to see how the products work for them. So data governance practitioners are not adverse to delivering things in incremental ways of working products and software. We know that data governance practitioners also want to make sure that we're gathering the appropriate level of requirements and that we're bringing the right people into the fold as we're developing those requirements. And we want to be responsive and we want to make certain that we are evolving the solution into what it needs to be. So we want to make sure that the data governance practitioners, you know, look at Agile as an opportunity to highlight those areas where data governance is going to add value and focus on those rather than taking what a lot of people in the traditional sense think of as going to be a process that slows down everything. We want to be able to respond quickly to the initiatives that are focusing on the Agile development method. And in the past, I've basically, I've talked about different core principles associated with governance, which are managing data as an asset, formalizing accountability, following rules, and being consistent in the way that we govern data. Well, we want to apply that to the agile efforts, too, and make certain that data isn't an afterthought, and that we have the appropriate level of focus, and that we're involving the appropriate people, and that people have the formalized accountability for making sure that the definition production and usage of data is well defined. Even if it's going to be an agile effort, we need to make sure that we're managing the data that's a part of that effort as an asset, formalizing the accountability, following the rules, you know, just because we're developing and delivering something in an agile manner doesn't mean that we don't need to follow the rules associated with compliance and regulatory controls and protection and privacy and those things that are being truly governed from external sources telling us that we need to do these things. We want to make sure that the data associated with the agile efforts follow the rules and we want to be consistent in how we do that across the organization. So how do we begin to bring these approaches together uh, that are different? Well, one of the ways that we're going to do that is to look at what, it, what does uh, agile efforts and data governance efforts have in common, and we want to outline those types of things. We want to strengthen that. We want to build on that, and as in the, the shampoo commercial say, we're going to rinse and repeat. We're going to continuously look for things where there is some level of coordination and cooperation between what Agile is looking to deliver and what data governance is looking to deliver. And we're going to highlight those things. And again, as I said, we're going to rinse and repeat um, using those things to um, further develop our Agile efforts to take data governance into consideration. So. And I, what I've outlined for you on this screen here is a bunch of the different principles that are associated with the, the agile development efforts, and that's complete features before moving on, testing early and often, active user participation. All of those things that you see on the screen in front of you now are some of the primary principles that Agile efforts have. They want to do all of those things, that they want to provide good design, they want to have simplicity in their approach to developing their systems, they want to maximize the amount of, of work, but they want to minimize the amount of effort that it takes to deliver successful projects. So if we look at these, how many are there? About 15 different primary principles associated with Agile what we want to do is we want to identify where in those principles data governance can have some justifiable level of impact on the Agile efforts. So the ones that I've highlighted for you are the active user participation, because we know we want to get the right people involved at the right time, the requirements at a high level, the, the managing, management of technical debt, which I'll, I'll describe in a, middle, in a minute if you don't know what technical debt is. Um, but we want to make sure that the requirements not only evolve over time, but that we understand the, the appropriate level of requirements before we can even get started with our Agile efforts. So let's take a look at each of those things individually as we discuss how to use Agile to justify data governance. So the agile principles that need to be targeted to justify governance are those four, the active user participation, 
the requirements at a high level, the technical debt, and making sure that we're involved in the data requirements as they evolve to fit the time scale that we have associated with our Agile efforts. So the first one was active user participation. So data governance typically speaks that same language. We want to get the right people involved at the right time. We want to make sure that we get the level of requirements that we need to be successful with our projects moving forward. So really, the essence of being non-invasive in our approach to, to data governance is that the users follow a governed process, that we formalize the user's accountability, and we get the, again, get the appropriate people involved to define those requirements for us, and that we can escalate issues to formalize decision making. So we want to activate the appropriate people at the appropriate times in our efforts in order to apply governance to an agile effort. These are things that both agile want and the data governance want in our projects. One of the areas where governance can potentially have its greatest potential to, for justifying governance for the agile efforts is the level of requirements that we are capturing associated with the data that's associated with our agile efforts. So this is one of the areas where potentially we have the greatest ability to be able to justify data governance in these agile efforts. So data governance practitioners pride themselves on capturing the required metadata, and what I've heard from individuals is that um, they feel, from people that are focusing on Agile, look at the data governance practitioners and say that they want you know, 15 layers, 15 pages of documentation associated with each piece of data. They're saying that the data governance practitioners are asking for too much documentation. So one of the things that we can do is we can either streamline our approach to gathering the requirements, or we can make sure that we are involved enough in the initiatives to make sure that the appropriate level of, govern, of requirements are being documented. So one of the things, one of the words of wisdom is that we need, that, that I would suggest, is that we need to bring our data practitioners and our agile practitioners together and get them to agree on the appropriate level of requirements that we are looking to gain for our data as part of their effort without interfering with their timelines and the things that, that they're delivering as part of their agile efforts. So as I mentioned, the requirements at a high level, this is, again, one of those areas that has the greatest potential to justify data governance for agile, but we as data governance practitioners are looking for the vocabulary metadata, the business metadata, the technical metadata, <coughs> excuse me, the, the lineage metadata and the linkage metadata that's associated with the data, and that's a lot that we're asking for. And it's very difficult necessarily to <clears throat> to document to the nth degree or to the degree that's necessary in your organization those things um, and help them to stay agile and quick in their delivery of their projects. So we want to, again, focus on the things that we can limit in our requirements to get the information that we need and make sure that we have a justifiable use for all of the information that we're collecting and that we're not just slowing down the agile efforts or interfering with their ability to move forward. Oftentimes, as data practitioners, we look at things like logical and physical data modeling, and in agile efforts, oftentimes the, the, the modeling of the data is not necessarily something that's at the forefront of their minds. So models require questions about things like cardinality, retention, growth, and those types of things. Models promote a common understanding of data across the organization. Models require the participation of data analysts, data architects, those types of people that really have data as their most important focus for the initiatives. And so we want to make sure that we're collecting that information, but again, we need to do it in such a way that we're not interfering with the agile delivery effort. So without detailed requirements, it's pretty much a given that projects can create their own understanding, which in turn can result in ambiguity and replication and other things that we don't want to see when we're governing our data. So we know that we need to document the requirements, but we need to come to some level of agreement with Agile, the folks that are running the Agile projects as to what level of requirements are appropriate 
and that we streamline the process for gaining those uh, those requirements and sharing those requirements and make sure making sure that those requirements are addressed throughout the agile effort. So often, the, so really the question that we need to ask, if most of the folks that are on this webinar right now are, are primarily data people as compared to agile people, and you know, typically in an organization, you don't see the agile people sitting down to lunch with the data people. They, they seem to be, again, at opposite ends of the spectrum. But questions that we can ask the data people are, you know, how much documentation is too much documentation? What's not enough documentation? What are the bare basic things that we need to collect as part of the project to be successful with, with the data aspects of these agile efforts? So do we use everything that we collect? And how do we use it? Can we justify it to the agile teams that the reason that we're asking these questions are that we need to have this information moving forward? Or can we put a limit on what we are asking for and again, streamline the manner in which we are collecting that type of information? Can we work out an agreement with the agile folks um, and isn't making really no decision on the requirements and basically um, continuing on without the level of detailed data requirements, is that really a decision that we can make? And oftentimes we need to take that back up to the senior leadership that I spoke about earlier and get them to understand that yes, we can be fast, but at a bare minimum there are certain things that we as the data people uh, associated with these projects need to collect. So another set of, another words of wisdom is consider the value of each of the different types of metadata and requirements and things that you collect through the process and let's minimize that and let's gather only those things that we know are really going to be necessary and that we can justify the, the need to collect these pieces of information as we move forward with our projects. Another one of those, those core things was requirements at a high level. We want to limit the data demands for the requirements. We want to um, achieve an agreed upon level of requirements. And again, that's bringing the appropriate people together from the agile teams and from the data teams and come to some level of agreement. I've seen organizations that have set up service level agreements between their agile teams and their data teams to make certain that at least these bare bone requirements are going to be in place so that we can have our ducks in a row when it comes to the data that's going to be uh, used as part of these initiatives and how that data is going to evolve and, and basically be the way that it needs to be by the end of the Agile delivery effort. We want to provide tools to the Agile folks to effectively capture those essential requirements, again, the limited requirements that we know that we need in order to be successful from a data perspective. And we want to provide the resources, we as data people may need to provide resources to the agile efforts to make sure that we're focusing on, again, that relationship between data governance and the agile of projects. So we want to align what data governance needs with what, uh, what the agile efforts need. And again, another word of wisdom is to incrementally apply that agreed upon level of data requirements to our agile efforts. So let's introduce to them a bare minimum of what we need, and if we find that there's additional things we need, then let's incrementally apply that to those efforts so that we, again, as data practitioners, make sure that we're getting all the rules associated with the definition of data, the production, and the usage of data as a result of these agile efforts. There's something that I mentioned earlier called technical debt. And so technical debt is typically requirements that eventually need to be addressed, but they, they're put into a, what I would call a parking lot list. These are things that we know that we need to address, but we'll get to them at some point. And we can't address them all right now because that's going to slow down our agile efforts. So one of the things that we as data practitioners can do is take ownership of that technical debt and, and help to drive to the resolution of those things that are associated with the technical debt. You know, oftentimes in organizations, those things are referred to as design debt or code debt, but it, it's also, if you think about it, um, that the debt can be thought of as the work that needs to be done before a particular job can be considered to be complete or properly finished. 
So if the debt's not repaid as we go, then it's going to continue to accumulate, making it harder to implement these changes later on. And that's information that I got from kind of a general definition of how, um, how agile efforts work in an organization. So if we as data practitioners take ownership of the technical debt, of the data debt, of the design debt, and we make certain that those issues are not just being swept under the rug and that they're being addressed, that's one of the things that we as the data governance folks can do to help, um, to help the agile efforts and make sure that nothing is being swept under the rug and all these technical debt issues are being addressed. So another set of words of wisdom is that you know, this is one of the biggest reasons why data people are skeptical about Agile is that so many of these things are being put on these lists, on this technical debt list, and they're not being addressed until too late in the game. And, and, and that if they're addressed and it changes something in the requirements, then that means that the Agile efforts need to go back and readdress these things. Well, what we want to do is stay aligned with the Agile projects, make sure that technical debt doesn't build up over time, and that we have data people that are associated with those technical debt things that are data related in our organization. So one of the reasons why, what are some of the reasons why technical debt accumulates? Well, because there's business pressures to get things done up and, uh, up and running quickly. There's a lack of, of understanding as to how these things are going to, imp are going to impact the, uh, what's being delivered through the agile efforts. That there's a lack of a test suite, which is, encourages, you know, basically quick solutions to things or band-aids to um, apply to these big data issues rather than just applying those band-aids if we as the data governance practitioners help to take uh, ownership of the technical debt then we're assuring that we're staying up uh, we're staying at least as much as we can in line with the steps of the process that are associated with the agile efforts um, and reasons why technical debt accumulates, um, that oftentimes there's the lack of the documentation, which kind of brings me back to what I mentioned earlier, which is we want to make sure that the information that we're collecting from the agile teams and the business communities that are going to take advantage of these agile delivery efforts, that, that we have the appropriate levels of documentation in our organization. Some additional reasons why technical debt accumulates is through lack of collaboration or not necessarily getting the right people involved at the right time. You know, there's parallel development going on, which could be contradictory to, uh, to each, ever, each of the efforts. There's a, a delete, delayed set of refactoring. As we know that the requirements for the projects evolve, it may be clear that parts of the code that have been written in earlier pieces of the agile delivery effort may need to be refactored if we don't do our due diligence and collect the requirements that we need when we need them in the project. So the lack of knowledge when the developers simply don't know um, how or when to write the code or what to write the code for because those requirements haven't been documented to the level of detail that they need to be documented. So we want to apply governance so that the technical debt does not accumulate. That's one of the ways that we can, we as data governance practitioners can assist in the delivery of these agile efforts. So formal accountability for managing the technical debt might be a shared responsibility between the agile teams and the data governance teams. We want to make certain that we have formal escalation processes so that we can escalate issues that are associated with the technical debt and resolve the issues in a timely manner, again, not to hold up the speedy delivery of the agile development teams. We want to have formal recording, uh, reporting of the technical debt status. Typically, when the data governance team gets involved in the agile efforts, they may take on the responsibility of that formal reporting of what is on that technical debt list and how it's being addressed and who has the responsibility for addressing it. So the last of the four things where I think that we can look for some level of alignment between agile and data governance is that the requirements evolve. 
And this is basically one of the biggest challenges when we're justifying data governance for Agile is that we want, from both perspectives, we need to evolve the requirements, but we have a limited amount of time to do it. So we're moving it, we're, we're shooting at a moving target, but we want to make sure that we have at least the level of requirements that we need to assure that the data aspect of the Agile focused efforts are the way that they need to be to, in order to deliver uh, effective Agile projects. Um, requirements often mean that there's a gradual process in which the requirements are being collected. Oftentimes they change over time, uh, and we need to make sure that we, again, govern the change to the requirements, govern the change to the agile efforts, and make sure that we have a process in place to make certain that um, that as these requirements evolve over time, that we as the data folks are aware of how those requirements are changing and that we're involved in making certain that the data aspect of these agile delivered efforts um, is appropriate for the organization. So let's break it down. There's going to be a gradual process for collecting these requirements. They change into something different over time, so we need to make sure that we have people looking at that through the data uh, magnifying glass to make sure that we're on top of how those requirements are changing. And oftentimes, as the requirements change, they become more complex, they, they move into a better form, but it requires the constant governance of, or the constant governance of of the gathering of those requirements and the use of those requirements to deliver effective agile efforts. So typically the management of the requirements requires some level of governance of the requirements, not only to document and record those, but to vet those and make sure that they're properly being addressed. You know, typically in a large project, they can, they can tell you th two things out of the three. The three things are how much time it takes to do something, the resources that are required, and the effort that's going to be required. Well, oftentimes, they can tell you how much time you have and how many resources you have, and then you can describe to them from a data perspective what the effort is that's required. Or they may give you the amount of time and the, and the effort that's required, and you'll tell them how many resources are going to be required from a data perspective. But my point here is that you know, they can't necessarily, even though they may try, to give you all three of these, typically in an organization, to be successful, they can really only give you two of the three so that you can define the third. Again, if they tell you the resources that you have and the effort that's required, you can tell them how long it's going to take from a data perspective. So again, provide, they provide two of the three, you can provide the third to make sure that the data aspect of the Agile projects is being addressed. So Agile itself is a form of project governance, it's just not data governance. And again, as we try to bring, align data governance with uh, agile efforts, we want to make sure that the data requirements are being addressed in a timely manner as to not slow down the, the agile delivery efforts. So the bottom line is that governance is the execution and enforcement of authority, but the governance of the agile efforts is the same thing. It's the execution and the enforcement of authority to make sure that the projects get done in a timely manner and that they address the business requirements that are associated with the project. So we want to make sure that the challenge is to make sure that we're gathering the most important requirements, the most effective requirements, and making that information available, making sure that we have those available requirements and they are essential to the success of the Agile efforts. And we want to make sure that the most essential requirements are addressed in a timely period so that we don't prevent um, the Agile projects from moving forward. So basically, real quickly, I talked today about you know, who are the audiences for both Agile and data governance and how can we bring them together and how can we get them to understand that even though we want both of these things, we've got to find a way of bringing these efforts together and having them cooperate. Um, we talked about the governance aspects of Agile and the things that are in Agile that require a level of governance. We talked about why data governance practitioners should embrace Agile, what are some of the considerations for data governance that come from the Agile principles that I shared with you, and last but not least, we talked about how to use Agile to justify data governance as, um, as a form of making certain that we're delivering high quality data and we're delivering it quickly in these Agile efforts. So, um, so 
that's what I have for you in the webinar today. Just a quick reminder that the, the upcoming webinars in January, February, and March are as you see here. And what I'd like to do is kind of turn it back to Shannon and see if we have any questions from today. Hey, Bob, we do have great um, questions coming in already and great presentation. Thank you so much. Just to answer the, some of the most popular questions that we get, uh, we, I will be sending out a follow-up email by end of day Monday with links to the slides, links to the recording, and anything else requested throughout the webinar, um, including your uh, Bill of Rights, so we do have that going out as well. Uh, so first question coming in here uh, is, in my experience, it's not just the large efforts that senior leaders support going agile, they're supporting all software related work going agile. Are you seeing more of that as well? No, I'm not actually. I'm seeing that agile is, is being, at least the ones that the organizations are talking about, the Agile efforts are associated with things that I mentioned, like I mentioned before, the ERP transformations where you've got a company that has been working under one, uh, working under multiple ERPs and they're looking to migrate to a single ERP or something like that, or redevelopment of a data warehouse effort and to do that in an Agile effort. It's just from my experience that I haven't seen Agile being, um, being associated with the small software project. But then again, that's just my experience. But if you are in an organization where Agile is being applied to these smaller efforts, the same thing still holds true. There's still data requirements that need to be gathered and need to be addressed. And again, we can limit those things that we're asking for from the Agile teams in order to even make those smaller software projects successful. Sure. Um, it, Nick, I, it, a lot of software questions come up, and, and no surprise here. So, uh, can you share three to four technology solutions that can help assist in data lineage? Three to four technology solutions. Well, I can start with the one, which is the, the lineage metadata and knowing where the data came from and knowing where the data is going, because that's going to be one of the first questions that people have when they start to use these efforts that have been delivered to the Agile um, delivery method, is we need to know well, not only what did the data look like before it was moved over into this project, before it was transformed, what were the rules that were associated with transform? That data. So I would say that metadata is certainly one of the, the biggest technologies that can be applied, um, but we also need to have a place to be able to record that information and make that information available to people, including the Agile development teams, to make sure that the appropriate level of documentation is there for the people that are expected to leverage and use the Agile, the things that are being delivered through the Agile method. Now, Bob, I know you're a member of the DGPO, so how do you see the DGPO and the PMO working together in, to enable an agile data governance model? It's very interesting. So the DGPO, the Data Governance Professionals Organization, um, is looking at best practices around data governance. And so I'm not enough involved with them to know that they have taken this on as a task and one of the great things about the DGPO is that it's a community of interest of people around data governance. And I would say that the more people, the more of you that are involved in the DGPO that go to them and say, one of the things that I really need, one of the areas where I'm lacking is in that coordination between data governance and agile, make it a point to the DGPO to make certain that there are these things that we need, and if they hear enough from enough people, they will, I'm sure, knowing the folks that run the organization, they will apply resources to providing you an answer of what can we do to, in a timely manner, um, assist with these agile efforts. That's a, that's a great answer. Uh, and in order to do the way you are talking about, the data governance practitioner has to be in the agile development team, basically the member of the agile team. If uh, data governance committee is a separate entity and not part of the project team in an organization, how does it work? It doesn't. <laughs> to be simple with the answer is that if you don't have people involved in the agile team, that, that, and, and let me share with you a quick anecdote about a company that was moving to do an ERP implementation for the first time in the organization, 
And there were no data people, data focused people, or people that were part of data governance that were involved in the team. Well, the way that we got started was we took individuals, data analyst type people, and we involved them in the efforts basically as being a fly on the wall in the meeting. So they were instructed not necessarily to raise their hand or put the kibosh on things that were moving forward, but they were there to hear what, how the, the agile efforts and agile meetings were taking place. And so what we basically did was we instilled somebody from, from data governance, from a data team on the project team. If you have a problem with that, if your organization or if the agile teams are not willing to get data people involved, then that requires some level of escalation to somebody in the organization that says, look, we're not going to interfere with what you're doing, but we need to hear and make sure that, that we are collecting the appropriate level of data requirements in order for you to be successful with your project moving forward. So the easy answer is, no, you're not going to be successful if you don't have data people at least having an eyeball on what's happening with your agile efforts. Um, and so what are the required steps in order to get somebody involved, whatever they are, Get it to the appropriate person who says, yes, we can at least provide a resource to sit in and listen to what's going on during these Agile meetings. Well, Bob, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. We do have a few quick questions coming in, but um, just to let everybody know, keep your questions coming. I'll be sure and get those questions to Bob, and we'll get the answers to those questions unanswered in the follow-up email. Again, I'll send that follow-up email by end of day Monday with links to the slides links to the recording of the conversation and additional um, information from Bob, including his uh, a link to his Bill of Rights, as you heard about in the webinar today. So, Bob, thank you so much for this great presentation and for um, wrapping up the, the webinar year so well. We certainly appreciate it and look forward to 2017. I am looking to it as well. Happy holidays, everybody. Have a safe and happy holiday. And Happy New Year. Hope everyone has a great day. Great. Thank you. Cheers.